RID-01 Prowl is a fantastic figure, but it's also a prime example of that late 90s Japanese tr transformation schemes. I really like this figure though. A lot of people think the Auto Bros are kind of complicated, but Prowl is not the most complicated out of the three. I definitely think it goes x -Bron, Prowl, and then Sideburn in terms of complication, but we're gonna take a look at this guy because there's a lot to like about this mold. It really does bring me back to when Transformers cared about its paint jobs. Also, the rubber and pinned wheels make this guy look and roll amazing. The details on this are fully picked out. Headlights, taillights, details on the side, light bars, even detailing on the windshield, which is insane. Spoiler and side skirts. It's all there. Everything that you could want picked out is picked out with paint. And there's so much like clear plastic on here. It does look quite nice. For size comparisons, here it is with TFCC sideburn, as well as legacy crankcase. Reveal the shield. Energon Shock Blast, Power Core Combiner's Crankcase, Machine Wars Hoist, and of course, Combiner Wars Laser Fire. Yeah, I know this is the universe version, so you don't have to comment that. I know it is. No, just kidding. But yeah, this is the universe one, but it's basically identical to the, um, the RID version. So referring to that as such is not a big problem for me. I am missing the missile pods, but it's just some launchers that tab in right here and to have like push fire missiles. Um, transformation, very, very simple. What I like to do is I like to pull up on this light bar and kind of push down on the hood. That's going to free up the windshield. And then you want to gently wiggle these free and pull them forward. Now, the reason I say gently is because these are on clear plastic ball joints and the TJ Omega that is in the back of my head is screaming like clear plastic ball joints. So do be careful on this. I actually checked this one when I bought it to make sure that those weren't cracked. Um, spin these around 180. And now we can get into the real transformation here. You wanna lift the hood up on this armature, bring the seats, which you can get a better look at here, bring the seats down and then we're going to collapse this up and into the spine and fold this down. Then take the feet, spin them around, take the shins and spin them around. And you can see some real Beast Wars engineering on this guy. Um, and then you're going to slide this up and that's gonna lock everything right here into place, fold that down, spin the whole figure around, bring this armature down, fold it and then collapse. Now you're going to split up here. Oh, wait, no, sorry, split right there. This can stay connected. So you want to split from this arm, bring this down, just the hip skirts, rotate, fold, and just extend the arm. So there we go, there's that one. And for the other arm, you're going to split, fold, and instead you're going to take this whole shield assembly and there's a hinge right there. You're gonna fold it over on itself so that way it sits more center on the arm. And there we go. And if I had the, the weapons, this is where they'd plug on. Um, but for right now, they're I'm just gonna fold the things down like that. Oh, and the chest bits. Uh, take these exhaust pipes and flip them up against the shoulders. And there we go. There's RID uh, 01 Prowl, a pretty solid little mold. Like honestly, like still a decent transformation, not nearly as bad as people think. Robot mode on Prowl is very, very sleek. The thing you end up with after a pretty easy transformation, all things considered, is a slick robot with samurai stylings. The head sculpt is super unique and slick, definitely acceptable for a figure named Mock Alert. I really, really like the way that this ended up. The side skirts draping over the legs are super unique, and the shield arm is also really, really unique to this figure in particular. Nothing really gets in the way of itself either. The only thing that I can ever really complain about is those hip skirts and the wheels underneath them. Other than that, he can take on almost any pose you really want because the articulation on this guy is that Beast era articulation so it does work really really well being mostly ball joints for comparisons here he is with tfcc sideburn again as well as some legacy rid dudes that being scourge adjust the camera there we go and here he is with toe line and of course can't forget laser fire and shatter shock as well as machine wars hoist 
Articulation on R.I.D. Prowl is actually pretty good, but it's one of those figures, like I said, where you can definitely see some Beast Wars engineering, especially Japanese era Beast Wars engineering. Uh, so he does have a swivel at the head, so just a simple swivel. He has ball joints at the shoulder pads, so they can move kind of back and forth, but they mostly use in and out. For the, uh, they do swivel, of course, but he actually does have like forward moving arms that go up pretty far. So if you didn't want the shoulder pads to move, you can use them simply for like kind of up and forward and outward movement like that um, to kind of coincide with his other joint to get really, really good posability there. He has a elbow and then a ball joint elbow. So he has an in and out elbow and then a ball joint elbow that also doubles as a swivel. And he has that on the same arm, but this one is obviously hindered because it has the shield on it. Although it shockingly gets around a lot of things, like he can still really like use this. No waist swivel. And the one thing I do want to talk about here um, is the, the gooch, right? So his... His gooch um, likes to likes to slide out, so do do keep that in mind when you are posing this figure. Also, keep in mind that the wheels on the inside are going to be bumping the inside of these doors, and he actually does have painted interiors on the doors, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty pretty cool. Uh, these are on ball joints and hinges, so you can get them out of the way, make them swoop back if you want them to, to make them uh, so he can Naruto run. But yeah, so. Um, and then we get to the legs, which uh, there's nothing bad about the legs. Um, they're just on simple ball joint hips that go out. They are hindered because of the wheel. Uh, ball jointed knees, which of course can be a swivel knee. And then he has barbelled ankles. So he has a double ball joint in his ankle. So they can go kind of forward, back, swivel. Like really, they could tilt a little bit. So he has really advanced kind of ankles going on, especially for the time. Um, but... Yeah, so the, definitely of the era, like this is 100% like a Japanese late 90s era figure um, because 100% the engineering style fits that. But yeah, honestly, great toy, great figure, looks amazing. All in all, Prowl is a fantastic figure. It's a namesake that follows a lineage of characters, this one being kind of the forgotten middle child of them, being right between G1 and animated, versions that really do make their mark more than this guy. That said though, RID-01 Prowl is still a really good figure and looks amazing standing next to the current auto troopers or even other RID characters, whether they be current versions or the previous versions. He looks amazing. And it's a figure that I think still holds up. I think a lot of the new molds for R.I.D. do hold up, and Prowl is definitely one of them. The Auto Bros totally are some of those molds. But I know that this figure isn't for everyone. It does have a weird aesthetic. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Let me know what you think of Prowl, and I'll see you guys in the next one. This has been Bot's Obsession.